honestly the roads in Bulgaria it's like a literal war zone it's just I'm near Sofia again near some monastery and you had a storm here obviously some roads just broke off see there's nobody here and then you have this complete trash you don't even see where the road is supposed to be and then you have this pile of trash here and I don't know even what it is like just asphalt and says uh, property of the monastery don't touch but what is this even guys get your act together really sometimes it's hard to believe you're in Europe so in terms of infrastructure and even just walking anywhere it's only getting worse <laughs> it's not improving it's 2024 yeah I know there's been snow but the whole country just turns into mud you know and nowhere to walk oh god it's honestly quite grim and I'm just weeping for the present and the future of Bulgaria because it's this huge potential and it's just not being optimized. We see some unfinished and uh, some probably whitewashing of money laundering. It's not quite from the communist era, these buildings, but someone had to put some money somewhere, and I guess <laughs> I have no idea. It's all just strange, and then there's the actual path to the monastery, and it's just left like this, you know. Like I said, the most interesting in Europe, but in many ways also, I wouldn't say the most depressing, because most depressing place in Europe is Luton in England, where you're actually not safe. But you have these white and dark contrasts in Bulgaria, let's say. Uh, it pulls you through all kinds of emotions. You're always safe, but winter is a real time of reflection here. Where typically everything either turns into snow and then mud. And when you do go somewhere it's a little bit... I don't know. It makes you think about time, let's say. And when I was walking in the villages a bit earlier, I was already nostalgic for summer, for last summer. Because I just drove through Verinsko and then I saw back flashback memory, memories of myself sitting on the same a little cafe drinking coffee and then it was summer it was 35 degrees that was when my grandma just passed away and I remember I was sitting there walking from the station getting a ride running back to the train station and the summer's just gone so when I was not in the village of Verinsko in the meantime all the leaves just fell and life went on while I wasn't there and I don't know, it makes you nostalgic for things that are not even too long ago. It's strange, very strange. Bulgaria is a deeply emotional and, as I often say, spiritual country. And it brings you into very close contact with your own feelings, whatever those may be. Bulgaria sort of pulls them up for you because it brings you into... It shows you all kinds of places abandoned places, places where life sort of goes on or has completely died out and it shows you the passing of time, that's what Bulgaria does in a very strange sense that no other place can, I think I mean you could say the same for let's say a historical town in Italy or a city, Firenze and the large Cathedral de Duomo in Firenze. You could say that brings you back to earlier times. But honestly, it does it because it feels like an attraction park to me where it's all polished up. And even when it's not polished up, it's just straight out dirty. But Bulgaria and then the forests and the emptiness brings out more emotions than even the most ancient cathedral in Italy. 
it brings you to a place that's reflective of the state of your mind. So it can be a dark place or a bright space or just a reflective place. Whatever that might be, Bulgaria will pull it up inside you. Now apparently the monastery is private property. So I guess I cannot really go see anything. I don't know, there's nobody here. Also down the road there's no signs telling you it's private property, which is a bit sad because all the way up and you can't do anything here. It's now for just people living here. Well, let's check it out. Yeah, place is giving off like mixed feelings because it says like it's private property, but I don't know. And that it's protected park, monasteries, property, and then there's an Ayasmo, like a water hole, let's say, holy water. I guess I can check this out and then I'll go back. Nope, it's all locked anyway, a bit of a sad monastery. Let's go back. Can I do anything here, fortunately? Honestly, the place can look grim, guys, in winter. I know it's literally now. Like 20 kilometers from Sofia. Uh, but it's cool, I like it. Anyway, the church here uh, is closed. Unfortunately, I forgot what this village is called. Shipbauti or something. A beautiful church. I wish I could go in, but. So I'm in restaurant hotel Nicole here in uh, Samakov.